Welcome live in Whiteland, Indiana, where the Warriors will continue their mid-state run this week. I'm Griffin Coons, and along my side, Gabe Reese and Jackson Brown. Gabe, tell me what uh, the Warriors need to do to get a win tonight. And I know it's repetitive, but obviously the run game is a big factor. Of course, for the last however long, Darren Fisher's been the coach. But I would also call last week a definite, a definite success in the past game, and I think really – you just need to keep building off what you've done the whole season, which is run the ball, like I said, but also keep continuing to improve the pass game and then just play good defense, and I think they'll be all right. Yeah, and Jackson, tell me a little bit about uh, Perry Meridian's offense and how they're going to run tonight, and also defense, what they got to do defensively uh, to stop the Warriors. You know, Perry Meridian's offense is uh, pretty solid this year. I, I see um, Alan Zupon, their senior quarterback, and the senior running back, Jonathan Hunter, being uh, their, their biggest contributors on the offensive side. Uh, Zupon is averaging about 128 yards a game and four touchdowns the, on the season. So, I mean, I, I really wouldn't mind to see them pass the ball. I know that running game is going to be pretty solid, but you can also go to the receiving side, who Zupon's throwing to. And, you know, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised to see Byron Hahn make some good plays, maybe even Ethan Neffel or Neffel. Yeah, and Ethan Neffel, he's going to be there as a – down marker tonight or he's going to be moving the chains for the pair meridian he's going to be the guy that on third down they have 10 yards to go they're going to get him the ball yeah and on that on that falcons defense don't be surprised to see you know the junior stringer uh get get around the get around the offensive line and who hopefully makes some, some, some just cause some ruckus in the backfield. Yeah, he'll definitely be a challenge for the Whiteland O-line. Yeah, and the Warriors are set to kick off tonight. Ethan Boone. We're showcasing their new black jerseys this week. One thing the Warriors have been pretty consistent about, consistent about this season is special teams. I mean, they've done pretty well. Uh, kicking and receiving, I feel like they've maintained good field position, put the uh, receiving team that they've, whoever, whenever they've been kicking, put them in a bad position and a good position for their own defense to make some stops. And we're off, Ethan Boone to the end zone. It's gonna be a touchback. We're gonna see a quick glimpse of this offense here. We haven't seen a ton of touchbacks for Ethan Boone this year. You know, he kind of keeps it around the 10 or 15 yard line and some of the guys hopefully run it back. And you know, this, this Warrior special team is able to make a lot of good plays, a lot of bang bang plays up front to hopefully get that stop before anybody moves forward on the special team side. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like I was saying, just a couple yards in, I think that would have been great field position for them to stop it, but just quite a little bit too far. Screen pass, that's Eli Williams on the outside. He's going to get a pick of about five on the play. And, man, Eli Williams, a big frame, standing at 6'2", 180 pounds. I mean, a great sophomore receiver they have um, developed in him. I mean, yeah, all these, all these receivers, I mean, they only have three or four guys who have catches this year, but, you know, Eli Williams is pretty solid. He's he's only a sophomore. He's got almost 30 yards a game, and he averages about 10 yards a catch. So, I mean, if you can get 10 yards out of a guy every time you throw it to him and he catches it, that's pretty solid. Another screen pass to him, and he and he's going to lose the ball. Blake Riddle's going to scoop it up, and it's going to be the Warriors that take over on their own 35-yard line. A really confusing fumble there. Is, there wasn't really much contact at all. He, I think he, honestly, I think he might have just kind of bumbled it. Yeah, this early in the game, I mean, we're not even a minute through the, fir the first quarter, and there's already a fumble and, and sets the Warriors up in great position for a score here. Yeah, now we're going to see some of the Perry Meridian defense out here. See what they can do here tonight. Warriors set up in high formation. They're going to shift. There's going to be some movement up front. 
No signal yet. And that's going to be on Perry Meridian here. It's going to start the Warriors even better field position. Yeah, and Perry has not started out this this game. I mean, one one made catch for about five yards and a fumble, and then on the first play of the Warriors' first offensive drive of the game, they get a flag called. So not what they want to see to start the game. Yeah, we saw a lot of flags in the favor of the Warriors last week. As you know, Corey Horner, the senior, kind of just – Absolutely obliterated one of the offensive linemen. As Tyree Nolan goes to the outside on that dangerous play we saw last week. He's got some room. It's actually Braden Yates on the outside. Oh, Braden Yates. He's going to pick up the first down here. Yeah, and I think it's been a great addition to have Brain Yates back in the back, uh, back at sweeper here, uh, taking some carries away from Blake Riddle, who's having to play defense. Yeah, we saw last year a couple solid runs from him. We've seen a few this year. I mean, he's ha he has some potential. He could be he could be a pretty solid guy as he gets older. Yeah, only a sophomore. Man, we're only a minute and thirty in this game, and. Already a lot has happened. We're set up in the I formation. Nolan in motion. They're going to hand it to him on the outside. Tackle made by Colton Barker. It's going to bring up third and short. The play seems to be working very well for them. Warriors in I formation again. Hands to Valentine. Makes a man miss. He's going to pick up the first down. It's going to bring up first and goal for the Warriors. We see Jordan Palmer in the huddle. Last week he had a pretty solid game. Had a lot of had a lot of carries last week. Um, he's averaging 20, 21 yards a game. With, I mean, this this Warriors offense for the on the rushing side is almost at almost three hundred eleven yards a game, which is pretty awesome. And they're gonna get it to him up the middle for a short gain, and that's what they like to do with Jordan Palmer. They like to give him a short yard situations where he can just play smash mouth football and get a couple yards. Yeah, we have we have a lot of those guys on this team. Clayton Ratliff, Jordan Palmer, a, a few other guys that just they're the guys you can count on to go get, you know, four or five, six yards every time they have the ball in their hands and just push up the middle, you know, using their size and strength. As much Slate is more Slate's an agile guy, he can he can read he can read the offensive line and get through holes like nobody else. That's the that's the leisure for these Warriors for those guys. Yeah, and they're gonna hand it to him and he's gonna cut up the middle. And he's going to be in the end zone for the Warriors' first touchdown of the night, Slate Valentine. The Warriors are going on for an extra point with Noah Pope, and Caden Lee is the